irritating to me. Praise God personally. But then, staying there for a while and studying, 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 then, boom, it came. Praise God. And then after I was done, I closed the Bible. I said, thank you, Lord. Literally. Praise God. Praise Jesus. And the word I got this morning uh, has mainly to do with verse 9. Praise God. Uh, but before I start the word, I'm just going to acknowledge God. The Bible says, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he will direct our path. No matter how much we study, God knows what needs to be said. And his anointing breaks the yoke. So just going to pray, Heavenly Father, that we approach your throne in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, in all thy ways acknowledge you, and you will direct our path. I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would take full control as we break the bread of the word, Lord Jesus. We thank you for each and every one this morning. We praise and pray for those also that we don't see. Lord Jesus, oh God, I pray you might use me for your glory and I leave all things in your hands. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. From the very beginning, Jesus knew who he was dealing with. Praise God. And it's amazing that um, at times we are surprised, but Jesus is never surprised because he knows all things. It, we're always catching up with Jesus. Praise God, whether you believe it or not. Praise the Lord. Um, Jesus, the Bible says, God sent his son in the fullness of time. So God works with time. Not a day before, not after. It was prophesied in the book of Daniel. The exact date the Messiah would come. It's a 70 week prophecy if you want to study it. So everything was done according to time when Jesus decided to come and robe himself in flesh and dwell among man, there was, as they say according to history, about 30,000 priests, scribes, elders, Sadducees, Pharisees. There was a lot of people Jesus could have used. Praise the Lord. But according to scripture, we know that seven of them were fishermen. One was a tax collector. One was a lawyer. Praise God. Um, he chose just regular people. Praise the Lord. He could have chosen the high priests and people that knew the law. He could have chosen a lot of other people. Praise God. But he chose these 12 disciples. Having chosen the 12, he says, I have chosen, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. And one of you is a devil. So from the very beginning when he chose the 12, he knew one of them was a devil. One scripture let us know that, John, uh, that Judas was a thief. It says it in John 12, verse 6, that he was a thief. But Jesus is so interesting. You know, if you study Jesus, you're just like, man, you're really cool, man. I don't know how you do it, but you got to be God. Praise God. Because the Bible says that Judas was the treasurer, but yet he was a thief. But yet he was a devil. So why would you give the thief the money? Praise the Lord. But he gave him the money. And he knew he was a devil from the very beginning. And Judas walked with Jesus for three and a half years. He saw the miracles. He wasn't in the inner circle, but he saw the miracles. He saw the blinded eyes being opened. He saw lame people be, being able to walk. He saw deaf ears open. He walked with Christ. He ate with Christ. He drank with Christ. He, he slept in the same room with Christ. He, he had communion with Christ. He, he was with Christ for three and a half years. But when it came toward the ending of Jesus' life, per se, near crucifixion time, praise God, Judas picked up some new friends. He started to hang around the Pharisees a little bit too much. And as Christians, we have to watch our company. Praise the Lord. Your company at times can lead you astray. Praise God. Uh, this is not just for children or teenagers. This is for everyone. This goes across the board from, from Samson to, 
to, to different characters you read in the Bible. You follow the wrong people. They are, and generally help you get them to wrong places. There's a lot of people, believe it or not, are incarcerated just because they were in a car with someone. Praise the Lord. They didn't actually do anything, but they, as they have it, guilt by association. And juries don't know you. They're not from the block. They don't know the corner. They don't know who's who. They just see six people or four people or three people. And they don't have time to try and sort out who you are as a person. They just take the evidence and then they put you away based on that evidence. That's how it is in the real world. Judas began to hang with the scribes and the Pharisees. And he made an agreement with them or they made an agreement to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of this is not a lot of money. Deuteronomy, I think it's uh, 28, 16, I don't remember exact, but we know according to Deuteronomy that if an ox gored another man's slave by accident, the law says that you would have to pay that owner 30 pieces of silver for your ox killing that slave by accident. Praise God. So Jesus was sold for the price of a slave. Praise the Lord. It's hard to believe, but that's it, actually what happened. It wasn't a whole lot of money. I find it interesting because the Bible says that the woman that put the spike nard on Jesus, it said it was worth 300 pence. She used that to anoint the feet of Jesus, and it cost one year's wages. And that was just to anoint his feet, not to sell him out, but just to anoint his feet. But Judas who had a close relationship with God, the 30 pieces of silver. It came to the time now where Judas would go into the garden of Gethsemane and point Jesus out. He says, the man who I kiss, that's the one. Jesus, one thing I, 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 I am cool with Jesus with is that Jesus let people hang themselves, literally, because Judas would hang himself. But he never at the communion table said, Judas is going to betray me, and he's the one. He let people expose their own self. Praise the Lord. I give you the bag, you a thief, but you will expose yourself. You don't have to expose people. God in time will expose people. Praise the Lord. You don't have to expose them. So Judas goes and kisses Jesus. Jesus says, Betray, he says, betrayest thou me with a kiss, Judas? And then they took him. Jesus turned to the crowd and said, weren't I with you in the temple? You come out here with stabs and with swords. He was telling them, you know me all along. A band of soldiers, if I remember correctly, was either 300 or 600 soldiers, one or the other. So they didn't send like five or six people. They sent a band soldiers for Jesus and he says to them you come out as for a murderer or a thief why not with you in the temple you know me and they took Jesus and they led him away they led him away as a lamb to the slaughter Jesus did not fight he prayed prior to this he says Lord if it be let this cup pass but not my will Thy will, O Lord. He told in his prayer to God, this cup, this cup wasn't a nice cup. It's a cup that the body itself did not want. But it was the plan and will of God. As he said to Pilate, for this purpose came I forth. For this cause came I into the world. He came to die. Judas now, according to Matthew 27, when morning was come, went back to the elders, to the people that took counsel to put him to death. He went to them and he made a correct statement. The Bible says when he saw that he was condemned, he repented himself. 
he did not repent to God. He repented to himself. And he brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. A lot of Catholics today, they go in these little confession boxes and they tell a priest, I have sinned. But you need not tell the Catholic priest what you've done. What you need to do is tell the chief shepherd, the priest after the order of Melchizedek. He says, if you will confess your sins, he, Jesus Christ, is faithful and true to forgive them. But you have to tell them to God. Praise the Lord. We spoke in the Bible study about relationship with God. And one thing we have to learn is to be honest with ourselves and with God. David was both. He says, I am, my soul is cast down. I am disquieted within me. He was honest about himself. Praise God. And he was also honest to God. Praise God. Search me. Try me. He was honest with himself. He was honest with God. Judas makes a correct statement. He says, I have sinned. I have betrayed innocent blood. And they said, what is that to us? See thou to that. In other words, you got yourself into this mess. Even though we came up with this plan together, you on your own now. See, that's the problem with bad company. The Bible says a friend sticketh closer than a brother. Bad company will cut you loose quick. Praise the Lord. They will act like they don't know you in a blink of a second. They will turn on you. Some of us, we've experienced this in our life. People that used to be close anymore in one argument, boom, you evil. Praise the Lord. People that you used to know and run with for a while, and boom, it's a sudden turn. They said, what is it to me? What is it to us? See thou to it. Praise God. Judas, he cast down the 30 pieces of silver. He didn't even get to spend it. The Bible says, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Notice it does not say, what shall a man take in exchange for his soul? So while you're giving the devil your soul, you're actually giving him something else. He gave back the 30 pieces of silver, and he's going to go get rid of his life. He saw that he was condemned. The Bible says, godly sorrow worketh unto repentance. But the sorrow of this world worketh unto death. Judas got the sorrow of this world. He decided to do what many other people would do in the Bible. People like Ahithophel, people like Saul, people like Abimelech, and also Pontius Pilate would all do the same thing, commit suicide. Why? Because they saw no end. They had no hope. They did not turn to God. They turned to man. Praise the Lord. If you turn to man, you will reach a dead end. But if you turn to God, come on. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Praise God. God can make a way out of no way. But the thing that got me with this scripture is when you get to the part where he threw down the silver and he went and hanged himself. And then the chief priests, they didn't want to touch the silver. They said it was the price of blood. They had no problem crucifying Jesus. They had a problem with accepting the money. Very hypocritical. But nonetheless, they did not want the money. And they said, let us buy us a field to bury strangers in. And we all know the field was called the field of blood, al Sidama, or, praise God, the potter's field, where they would bury strangers. So Judas actually bought his gravesite. But the thing that got me with this story is when Judas said, I betrayed innocent blood. You see, if you look at verse 9 with me, it says, Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, They took 
the 30 pieces of silver, the price of him that was value, whom they of the children of Israel did value. Notice it didn't say that Judas valued. <laughs> it said the children of Israel valued Jesus like the 30 pieces of silver, just like Judas did. I was talking to somebody the other day. They were sad and depressed. I told the person, I said, you know what? There are two types of people in this world. Those that value you, and those that don't. They did not value Jesus. Judas made the correct statement. You betrayed, he says, I have betrayed innocent blood. But you know what, Sister Charmaine? This is what got in my spirit when I was studying it. I realized something. Judas did not know the price of that blood. Praise the Lord. Judas did not have a clue. The same way the children of Israel did not value Jesus, it's the same way Judas didn't value Jesus. But he said that it was innocent blood, but he didn't know the value of that blood. If he had known the value of that blood, he would have made a better decision. I'm talking to the church this morning. What are you saying, Brother Donovan? I'm saying that had he known the value of that blood, Brother Orville, this is the blood that cleanses us of sin. This is valuable blood. This is the blood that the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that God himself took and sanctified heaven with. This blood sanctified heaven because sin had first started there. What kind of blood? I'm talking about the blood that gives us victory over the enemy. The Bible says uh, by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the lamb they overcome him. What are you talking about brother then? The value of the blood. This is the blood according to Acts 20 and 28. That the Bible says this blood purchased the church. Praise the Lord. He did not know the value of the blood. Praise the Lord. He did not understand that this is the blood that speaketh better things than that of Abel. This is the blood that intercedes for you. This is the blood that washes away your sin. This is the blood that justifies you. This is the blood that redeems you. This is the blood, praise God, that gives us the new covenant. The blood of a better sprinkling. Because under the Old Testament, they took a lamb's blood and sprinkled it under the law. But he said, this is a new covenant which I made in my blood. This is the blood that you're going to have communion with. But he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood. The problem with Judas is that he did not value. Never valued the blood. People say Jesus spilled his blood. This is not a, a drink that you spill on the ground. This is something that he poured for the church. Praise God. And this is something that intercedes in heaven. Sister Barbara, don't you know in the book of Revelation when you read it? He said, I hear sounds, voices. What are those voices? It's actually the blood of Jesus still interceding for man today. But people say, how could Judas do that? How could he... Oh God, sell Jesus' blood for 30 pieces of silver. Well, I challenge a lot of people today. How is it people are, oh God, throwing away the blood? Oh God, for sex, throwing away the blood. Oh God, for money, throwing away the blood. For a degree, throwing away the blood. For all types of things, nothing. If you value the blood of Jesus, then oh God, you will give everything the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that findeth a pearl and selleth all he hath to get that pearl the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man that findeth a treasure in a field and selleth all he hath and buyeth that field when you come across the blood of Jesus it should be something to have some value
Jesus died for us. He gave his life for us. But will the church give their life for him? And I'm not talking about dying for him. I'm just saying giving over their life to him. He didn't value the blood. It's the same way some people don't value you. They sold Joseph for less than 30 pieces. They sold him for 20 pieces. And when people don't value something, praise God, they let it go for nothing. Like Esau sold his birthright for some lentil soup. And later on, he didn't realize the value. Am I talking to a church this morning? I didn't know the value of my mother until my mother went in the grave. That's when I realized the value of my mother. Praise God. A lot of times you don't know the value of things. A lot of young people, you don't know the value of money because you live under your parents' roof. You leave the lights on. You say, oh, they always bothering me to shut off the lights. Turn off the pipe. Stop steam yourself in the shower like steamed vegetable. Praise the Lord. But then when you start paying those light bill, and you start paying those phone bill, and you start paying those water bill, now you walk around the house. Turn off this light because, praise God, this has value because there's a price to pay. Value. They didn't value him. All of Israel did not value him. But guess what? Don't worry. If you're around people who that don't value you, don't worry about it. The Bible says he went unto his own and his own received him not. But to them that received him, them he gave power. You don't want the power? There's somebody else value that power. Some people don't value you. That's fine. Up the road. Do you know whether you want to believe it or not, there are some men crying today for a past relationship with some girl and they tried 10 other women and then they crying. There was no girl like Shirley. I want Shirley back. You cook good, but there's something about Shirley's chicken that was different. And the way she just fluffed those pillows. And when she was doing all of that, you didn't value it. But as soon as she's gone. Praise the Lord. Value. They did not value the blood. He did not value the blood. The Bible says life is in the blood you don't value that 30 pieces of silver for what no value money go and come when you live long enough you realize that there was a time I had $133,000 in the account there was a time I had $3 in the account there was a time you have a big house the time you downsize. It's the time you have a Lexus. It's the time you have a Toyota. To everything, there's a time and a season. Praise the Lord. But the value of Jesus does not change. Praise God. I know y'all see inflation. Prices of lemons are changing. Price of gasoline is changing. Oh God, the price of bread and eggs. I went to Publix. 335 for a dozen of eggs everything changes but the blood of Jesus it never loses its power when they touched his side with the spear out came blood and water that purchased the church put value on Jesus it's a shame today. Come like you're begging people to serve God. Begging them to pray. Begging them to come to service. Begging them to go to prayer meeting. 
begging them to read the scripture, begging them to do this, begging them to do that. If God did, for God so loved the world, look how much value God put on you and I. God put value on you. For God so loved the world. Everybody in God's kingdom has value. And even if you're out of God's kingdom, for God so loved the world, not just the saved, but God loved the sinners too. He valued them so much that he gave his only begotten son. And a body only has eight quarts of water blood in it sorry and he poured it all out for man and you notice when he went to Thomas he said touch me behold he said look look he said flesh and bone he never said flesh and blood he said flesh and bone because the blood would go on the mercy seat praise God and the Bible says let us come before the throne of grace how did it become a throne of grace when Jesus put his blood on that mercy seat being a high priest under the order of Melchizedek when he put his blood on there it's no longer a throne of law but a throne of grace People take the blood and they sell it out. Mommy would say they would sell it out for an ice cream cone. Sell it out for a date. Sell it out for foolishness. And you know what too? The blood of Jesus should make you apologize. The blood of Jesus should make you have a conscience. The blood, and I, I was thinking the other day, I said, some hearts today are so hard. And you know what, Missionary Bev? You know the only thing that's going to melt some of these hearts is the fire in hell. Preaching, your talk, your nice, your kind, you do everything that they might turn to God. But they don't want to turn to God. But you see, the word of God may not be able to break up that heart. Tony heart. But you see when hell fire catch it, you're gonna say, Mercy Lord, I repent. But it's too late. Hard hearts. You think you're doing God a favor serving him? You think you're doing God a favor when you come to church? You think you're doing me a favor? I don't have a hell to put you in or a heaven to put you in. You come to serve God whether I'm here or not. We weren't here last week, but your amen still need to go up. Your hallelujah still need to go up. And whether I never come back, you need to serve God because he died for you. People today come like they're doing you a favor if they apologize. You want to go to heaven, right? Come on, somebody. You want to go to heaven? Oh, you can't confess nothing. You can't apologize something. And you say you love Jesus? If you value the blood, if you really value Jesus, praise God, I've learned in life too that sometimes, praise God, if you get really spiritual with God, praise God, you go fix arguments quick because the anointing you once had, you don't want to lose it. That's why David said, take not thy Holy Spirit away from me. Praise God, because I don't want my relationship with you reflect my relationship with him. He didn't value the blood. He knew it was innocent. You see, the Bible talks about the righteous blood of Abel unto the righteous blood of Zechariah. But Jesus' blood was not only righteous, it was also innocent. He said, I find no fault in this man. The blood was sinless. The only person that ever had this blood close to it was Adam. Because Adam did not have sin in his blood when God made him. It's not until he ate of the tree of knowledge of good of evil that that tainted the blood. 
and now you notice brother oh god you notice that every tree had a seed in itself the mango tree had a seed the lime tree had a seed the orange tree had a seed but when it came to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the only seed it had was our body so now it passed on from one generation to the next generation to a writer can say we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity because the tree of knowledge had no seed but our body became the seed but the last thing that's going to be redeemed is this body. Praise God, we're going to get a new body. How is this all done? Through the blood of Jesus. He didn't value the innocent blood. He betrayed it. And look what God had for him. When he died and he goes before God, judgment. He'll see a seat there for Peter. He'll see a seat there for Luke. He will see a seat there for John. He will see a seat there for Andrew. But when he look, no seat for him. You sold your seat around God's throne for 30 pieces of silver. Is it really worth it? Is it really worth it? Is the arguments really worth it? Is the fornication really worth it? Is the animosity really worth it? Or we want to be dying and thinking about, well, maybe uh, my heart's not right? Is it really worth it? If you want God to forgive you of all your sin, you got to learn to forgive people too. That when it come to us in Jesus, Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, forgive me. You got to be able to forgive just as well. And one of the last things Stephen said when he was being stoned is, Father, forgive them. And one of the last things Jesus said when he was being, his Father, forgive them. Praise God. Yeah, you're hurt and you're offended. You don't think you hurt God? You don't think you offended God? God is so clean and God is so pure. The thought, all sin is unright, all unrighteousness is sin. That movie with three curse words that you accept in your spirit. That's not right before God. When you said you're going to be there at 8 o'clock and you came at 8.10. That's not right before God. Because God is perfect. God is clear. I was reading it the other day. Where it says when the elders in Exodus. When God told Moses come up with the elders. They saw Jesus. They saw the Lord. They said his feet was like sapphire. And his body was clear as crystal. You are not clean enough before God. God has to wash you with his blood. I can never forgive her. You better learn to forgive her. I'm not saying you got to go to the movies and chill with them every day. I'm not saying you got to go cook them some curry chicken and give them rice. What I am saying is, you got to let it go. It's not worth the blood of Jesus. See, we look at G Judas and how he sold out Jesus. We don't know we can do the same thing in our own little way. I have children, they don't listen. I forgive them. Simple as that. A lot of people say, how do you know you when you forgive? How do you really know when you forgive somebody? I say it like this all the time. I say, you know how you know you forgave somebody? You see, when you don't forgive somebody, it's kind of like when you get wounded. Because most people that are, have unforgiveness, there's a wound. If you can still feel that wound, you haven't forgiven them. But the day when that scar is there and you can look at it and you don't feel anything anymore, you can talk about your grandmother and you're not getting all angry. You, you could tell when people sometimes forgive people, you know. But when the scar is there, some people say forgive and forget. No, 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 I don't know about all that. Because I still got a scar. And even in heaven, he said, I saw a lamb 
as if it were slain. The scars they put on Jesus, he still has them today. Why am I talking to a church this morning? We got to be fair to both sides. Yes, you robbed me of a hundred grand. And now I'm supposed to forget? No, no, no. I'm going to hide my wallet away from you. But I'm still going to hug you up. Am I talking to a church this morning? You left a scar. It's visible. It's visible. And sometimes you remember so you don't make the same mistake. You're not remembering it to hold it against somebody. We have a lot to learn in apostolic church because a lot of times because we, we got um, Jesus' name and we fill with the Holy Ghost, we think we got things down packed. We got a lot of cleansing to do on the inside and learn to forgive some people. I tell some people, I like them. I don't like them, but I love them. Sometimes I say that to my wife. My wife said that to me. I don't like you, but I love you. Praise the Lord. It sounds harsh, but it's true. Paul was traveling with Mark and they had to separate. Something happened where they didn't like each other. But when Paul was in his fourth or fifth missionary journey, he said, send Mark because he's profitable for me. Even though we don't get along, we still have the same father. Our father who art in heaven. We may not see eye to eye, but we still got the same father. It's just like when Joseph said, are we not all one man's children? Not everybody you're going to agree with and like. You have ways I don't like. You like to snore. I don't like snoring. You like to leave power on. I like to cut off. You like to dirty up my car with your dirty sneakers. I like people who, before they get in the car, praise God. It doesn't mean I don't love you. You just got some ways. Come on, church. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves, turn, pray, seek my face. Oh, he said they're his people, but yet they have wicked ways. Mm. Hard truth, but it's the truth. Some, some people have a pastor. Pray for pastor. Pastor, you struggling? You don't think pastor struggling the same way? You don't see the same bully beef you eat. It's the same bully beef you eat. Or you think you eat a different bully beef. The same FPNL come with a red notice. You don't see it come to pass the same way. The same blood pressure medicine you are take. Pastor, I pop them on time. See way. Come on, man. Be fair. Give people a break, man. Pastor is just, just like you, but a little bit more anointing and a little bit more responsibility. A matter of fact, he has to watch over souls. You get to sleep. I still have to pray, pray for people who know they are chatting, but he still have to pray for them. Still have to love them. Still have to shake their hand. Say, God, give me a clean heart. Help me not to hate sheep when they kick me. Sometimes sheep kick. Praise the Lord. A lot of people don't like reality and facts, you know. Give you a warning, Brother AJ. You're going to wash the baby. I'm going to put on the nice clothes. You did it to your mother. I'm going to put the nice huggies on the baby. You might do the little... Right when you finish, wash with the Johnson and Johnson. My line, Sister Barbara. And everything done, and you hold them to baby. Baby, go. <laughs> Raise the Lord. It's not that you hate the baby. You just don't like what they just did. Praise the Lord. How many of us know we can have fun in church? Praise God. It's good to be in the house of God to the people of God. God bless you this morning. I have somewhere to go after this, but I thank God for each and every one of you. Pray for me. Pray for Abraham this morning. 
And not only Abraham, all the young people. Praise God. If we be honest, a lot of times when we were that age, we didn't have it all together yet. Praise God. When we're 17, 18, 19, some of us were in our 50s, 60s. Be honest. Okay, somebody was honest in God. We still don't got it down back yet. So, you know, we have to see with the young people. A lot of times when we're young, we make decisions and they're not the right ones. Praise God. But we don't give up on him. Neither any of the young people. Praise the Lord. Um, people say, I love them. I'm trying to love them. Praise the Lord. I'll be honest. I'm not, I don't have that perfect love like Jesus. I'm trying to love them. But I do have a good heart towards them. Though. Praise the Lord. And pray for all of them. Pray for Sarah. Pray for Olivia. Pray for Brad. Pray for Terrell. Pray for all the young people that pass through this sanctuary. Praise God. And you want to send a message to them? Tell them. 